and Bob say they need these discussions to continue. Up next on TMJ4 News Today, tightening the reins, Milwaukee's mayor already promising to crack down on businesses not following COVID rules as the city health department hints at tighter restrictions that could be on the way. When we could find out if there are changes to the city's reopening plan. Plus, protecting your personal information. You get a call from Publishers Clearinghouse, Amazon, even the U.S. government. The person <coughs> on the other end of the line could be a scammer. Tips on how to avoid getting taken. All right, 608 now, slam dunk for rainfall this morning, but our rain chances will start to diminish this afternoon. I think rain is likely up until about noon, and then the rain chances start to go down. Now we will see a return of rainfall at some point this weekend, maybe even some snowflakes. We'll break it down for you coming up. Welcome back everyone to our coronavirus coverage now. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett is promising tougher punishments for businesses caught not following pandemic rules. There will be no more warnings. Bars and restaurants caught not enforcing mask or social distancing requirements will be fined $500 right off the bat. The education period is over. Now you're either complying or you're not complying. With the serious situation we're in, it's appropriate to get more serious about the enforcement. The city is expected to unveil its new tougher health order in the next few days. In the meantime, a second patient is now being treated for the coronavirus at the alternate care facility at State Fair Park. The field hospital opened a week ago to serve people who are not severely ill to reduce the strain on traditional hospitals. Here's a look at the latest numbers statewide. There are now more than 1,200 COVID-19 patients being treated across the state. 38,000 people have COVID-19 right now. Taking a live look outside 12 minutes after six on TMJ4 News today. It is soggy. We were talking about <laughs> driving conditions, Brian. We've got a lot of rain and uh, the roads are really wet. Yeah, you come you come across a puddle, uh, you know, a good puddle and you're going 60, 65 miles an hour. That will move the car a little bit. So keep your speeds down uh, this morning. 48 hour rain totals. There's some big totals, especially northwest. Look at Fond du Lac. 3.33 inches of rain. Most of that falling through the night last night. Same for Sheboygan, over three inches of rain. Franklin at over two inches of rainfall. Uh, Cedarburg about an inch and a half officially uh, in Milwaukee. Also uh, right around two inches of rain. Storm 4 max radar across southeastern Wisconsin. Again, we do have scattered showers rolling through the area. Some rumbles of thunder. We are getting some thunderstorm activity now uh, down towards Kenosha, but uh, severe uh, threat with any of these is very minimal, if non-existent now this morning. In the city of Milwaukee right now, we are just seeing a a very light rain as we widen the view, though more showers lining up across eastern Iowa. This conveyor belt of moisture will continue to affect us for the next several hours, probably up until about noon. This is 10 o'clock widespread rain uh, at 10 o'clock by 2 o'clock this afternoon. Still maybe a stray shower, but most of the activity coming to an end. We might even see a peak of sun before the day is over with. For tonight, we're looking at mainly clear skies eventually, and then that's going to set up a frosty morning tomorrow morning, and then we'll have a decent amount of sunshine during the day on Saturday. Clouds will start to increase again heading into Saturday night. Uh, here's Saturday night around 11 o'clock, mostly cloudy skies, but dry. And then on Sunday morning, we'll start off with cloud cover and then eventually a rain snow mixture possible Sunday afternoon and especially Sunday evening. Uh, future rainfall for today, we could get another half inch to an inch of rain on top of some already impressive rain tallies. 45 right now in Port Washington, currently in the city of Milwaukee, uh, roughly 49 degrees, close to 50 degrees this morning. And as we look across southeastern Wisconsin, 52 in Kenosha, that warm air never quite made it into southern Wisconsin for the most part last night. However, the far southeast corner of the state, Kenosha got up to 70 degrees last night, believe it or not. All right, let's go through your weather headlines here uh, this morning. Soggy morning, chilly air is starting to move in. Late weekend mix. Your forecast for today, 50 degrees this morning, 40 this afternoon. So prepare for colder air as the day goes on. Decreasing clouds and breezy tonight. Some frost, 33 in Milwaukee, upper 20s inland, 44 and partly cloudy on Saturday. Sunday, rain snow mixture possible late. Still a chance of some rain and snow possible on Monday, no accumulation. And then some dry days on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Still below normal with temperatures, Susan Nimitz. Well, scammers continue to call people posing as Publishers Clearinghouse, Amazon, or some sort of government agency. They're trying to get your personal information. Karen Stiles of our Call for Action office tells us how to avoid getting taken.
most of us do a pretty good job of spotting a scam before we can get taken. But recently, we have seen an increase in the number of people who are getting taken by phishing scams. Here's how these scams work and why so many people are getting taken. You receive a phone call from what seems to be a legitimate company like Amazon, Publishers Clearinghouse, or someone servicing your student loan. Some scammers also pose as someone from a government agency like Social Security or Medicare. The callers convince you to release personal information by scaring you into believing that your account or numbers have been compromised. Or they pique your interest by telling you that you have won a prize or are eligible for lower rates or something for free. But in order to assist, they say that they need some information such as your social security number, date of birth, or bank information. Some of these scammers go a step further, providing you with your actual address to make the call appear real. Most of us think we could never fall for one of these scams, but if you pick up at a vulnerable time, you could get taken. To avoid falling victim, do not trust caller ID and let calls go to voicemail. Keep in mind, most of these businesses and government agencies will not call you unless you specifically ask them to call. They communicate via mail. Do not provide personal information nor push any buttons or make any form of payment until you can check things out. If you believe that you have fallen victim to this type of a scam, contact state and federal consumer agencies or our Call for Action office for help. For TMJ4 News Call for Action, I'm Karen Stiles. All right, Karen, thank you. Are you running into a consumer problem and unsure where to go for help? Our Call for Action office is ready to help. You can contact them using the information there that you see on your screen. Money certainly tight for a lot of folks during the pandemic. Local nonprofits have faced additional challenges of their own. A lot of people in the community are stepping up to help. Julia Fellow has this story of resilience coming up on TMJ4 News Today. And as we head to break, take another live look at Storm 4 Max radar this morning. Yeah, you can see uh, some breaks in our area for the rain, but we've got colder temperatures moving in and maybe even some snowflakes on the way for the weekend. Storm Team 4 meteorologist Brian Isnanski is back next. Fans of Chick-fil-A sauces will soon be able to buy those sauces in grocery stores nationwide. 16 ounce bottles of Chick-fil-A sauce and Polynesian sauce will be on the shelves of Pick and Save Metro Market and Walmart by the end of the year. They'll go for $3.49 a piece. Profits will support scholarships for Chick-fil-A employees. Apple stores often see people lined up when a new iPhone is released. This time around, they're saying no to the crowds. The iPhone 12 goes on sale this morning. Apple says if lines begin to form outside stores, employees will hand out reservation forms with time slots for people to come back later. If you're interested in the new iPhone, but want to save some cash, experts suggest waiting until Black Friday as they predict there will be some better deals. Hmm. Well, speaking of iPhones, people are starting to report a bizarre side effect of too much cell phone use. The problem is a bend in the pinky finger due to how a person holds their cell phone. Some have dubbed it smartphone pinky and blamed it on holding the phone with the thumb over the screen, right? And then the bottom balancing on the pinky finger. Probably a lot of you do it that way. Well, however, doctors say there is no clinical evidence that the condition even exists. And if your problem is a pinky finger from too much phone use, maybe the real problem is too much phone use. There, <laughs> there could be that. As you read that story, Susan, every one of us in the studio looked down and was like, wait, how do I hold my phone? <laughs> right, I know. I was, I was looking at myself doing that too. I'm taking a live look right now. We're outside Cathedral Square Park. Today, a sign of the holiday season set to arrive. They're gonna take delivery of 100 evergreen trees. And it'll ultimately be decorated by schools and nonprofits for the annual Holiday Lights Festival. Uh, opening night is just four weeks away. And over to Storm Team 4, yeah. meteorologist Brian Nisnanski. I don't think today is decorating day. I think they just get the Bring them there. Which is probably for the best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this morning, uh, that's going to be soggy out there. Uh, Cathedral Square, soggy for your morning commute. Let's get right to it here. Uh, you can see the scattered showers rolling through. In fact, some thunderstorms now uh, down towards Kenosha. Uh, you can see a couple downpours here, some lightning strikes out towards Pleasant Prairie and even right in the city of Kenosha. Great day to download the TMJ4 app. You get the interactive radar and you get the hour by hour forecast. And with the hour by hour forecast, you will see that the rain comes to an end by 2 o'clock this afternoon. Rain chances are 
are over with and we should be dry into this evening. Some Friday night football forecasts here. You got Elkhorn at Delavandarian kickoff temperature. 39 degrees. It's going to be chilly out there falling through the games uh, today. Waukesha North at Waukesha South. 37 at kickoff. Should be dry, but it's going to be breezy. How about this matchup? Who you got, Vinny? I got Grafton 78 zip over Tosa West. I like it. Oh, yeah, you're Tosa East. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. <laughs> we agree on we this. We agree on that one. All right, 38 degrees uh, at kickoff. Uh, <laughs> Hartford at Slinger, 36 degrees at kickoff. Again, these football games should be dry. I'll take Hartford in that one. <laughs> to the rebound, Milwaukee. The pandemic has shown the resiliency of many people. That's thanks to the generosity of so many people keeping nonprofits running. Julia Fellow shares how United Way played a crucial role in keeping one organization's doors open. Would you guys be where you are right now you know, without them? No. We'd be hurting like all guy get out. We were there at the start of this pandemic with YWCA of Southeast Wisconsin when little was known about the virus. The cleaning bills became astronomical. The United Way took that burden over for them, handing over thousands of dollars worth of free personal protective equipment. We have vendors that we've had decades long relationships that reached out and said, hey, we have a line on gloves. Hey, we have a line on masks. When people can tell you there were some things you just couldn't find. And if you found them, the price gouging was real. While the YWCA was able to return their focus to their mission to empower women and keep their programs running. It really was the humanity of the moment and I think that's the real root of United Way. And it's thanks to donations from people who met the moment. United Way has given out a million dollars in COVID-19 relief in Milwaukee and Waukesha counties alone. Nicole Angrisano said they loosened the application process for nonprofits during this pandemic. Without immediate response, they were going to be in trouble. Meaning Meanwhile, the United Way of Racine County has been able to give out about $150,000 worth of COVID-19 relief funds, where yet again the YWCA was able to get computers for their high school equivalency diploma students in Racine County. So they didn't have to attend class on a, on a smartphone. Allie Hag shares United Way's Racine chapter is continuing to raise money right now to help local shelters expand their space and capacity. To uh, the Racine Zoo that purchase food for the zoo animals because they had to shut down during COVID and they were not receiving income. Because there is no better way to get things done than as a community. Here is your rebound rundown. The United Way is still fundraising for a second round of COVID-19 relief funds. The goal is to get the money out to nonprofit organizations fast to keep running. Learn more on how to donate at tmj4.com slash rebound. Julie. All right, Julia, thank you. Still a lot more news ahead this morning. Let's get on to our Ryan Jenkins with what he's got coming up after 6.30. Hi, Ryan. Good morning. Yes, the uh, search for Milwaukee's next police chief has been narrowed down to just three finalists. When we come back, we'll tell you how you can now get involved in helping the FPC make a final decision. Next at 6.30 here on TMJ4 News today, only 11 days out to the election this morning. We're learning how many people have already voted in Wisconsin, and our Charles Benson is going to break down the counties that we need to keep a particular eye on. Fighting it, and we're fighting it hard. I will take care of this. I will end this. I will make sure we have a plan. Plus, squaring off, President Trump and Joe Biden took the stage one final time before the election, making their case to voters across the country. What was on the table during last night's showdown? And the search for Milwaukee's next police chief just got narrowed down. We'll tell you who the three finalists are and what happens next coming up. And we're taking a live look at the storm for Max Radar, where you can see we have some scattered showers working through this morning, even some rumbles of thunder down towards Kenosha. Another soggy commute expected. When this rain finally comes to an end, when the faucet turns off in your forecast coming up. All the information you need to start your morning. This is TMJ4 News today. <laughs> Did the rain wake you up this morning? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Friday. I'm Susan Kelb. And I'm Vince Petrano. Wet morning in what has been a wet week. Brian went from yeah. driveway to garage <laughs> to here in the studio with us yeah. this morning. So he gets us started. Playing that out perfectly. No, uh, last night came in last night, late last night, early in the morning. There were some pretty strong thunderstorms in central Wisconsin. Just enough to keep an eye on in the studio this morning. But that severe threat is over with. 
Uh, you can see we just have good old garden variety showers and even a few rumbles of thunder working across southeastern Wisconsin. Let's go right into the city of Milwaukee. A light rain on the north side up towards Whitefish Bay, Brown Deer out towards Miller Park. A little heavier rain down towards Cudahy uh, this morning. Then it gets even heavier down towards Kenosha. Even a couple lightning strikes here. Again, nothing close to being severe. This is a live look towards the Marquette Interchange. It is soggy. Temperature at 49 degrees. Still hanging on to 51 in Kenosha. 30s northwest. Those 30s will be headed towards us. Again, we are going to fall through the day around 50 today, 40 in Milwaukee when you head home. So your commute cast here this morning wet up until about midday. Let's call it one o'clock, two o'clock. Then I think the rain comes to an end. Again, we should be dry for the evening commute. Super seven day forecast looking ahead towards your weekend coming up, guys. Well, President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden will hit the campaign trail. Biden back in his home state of Delaware. Trump planning a battleground blitz that includes Wisconsin. They're both fresh off the final debate Thursday night in Nashville. Both candidates' microphones were muted at times last night, allowing the other to speak un uninterrupted. Though the tone was more relaxed this time around, there were still some fiery back and forth moments. Coronavirus, a huge focus of the debate. Trump defending his response to the pandemic. Biden suggesting the president failed to get things under control and is responsible for the more than 200,000 deaths in the U.S. One is responsible for that many deaths should not remain as president of the United States of America. See, we're learning to live with it. We have no choice. We can't lock ourselves up in a basement like Joe does. The climactic showdown also included this sharp exchange on racial justice, an issue that's been on the minds of many Americans since protests erupted across the U.S. this summer. I am the least racist person. I can't even see the audience because it's so dark, but I don't care who's in the audience. I'm the least racist person in this room. Abraham Lincoln here is one of the most racist presidents we've had in modern history. He pours fuel on every single racist fire, every single one. Today, President Trump heads to Florida for two more rallies before he plans to vote in person there Saturday. Trump also scheduled to hold a rally Saturday night in Waukesha at Stein Aircraft Services. Biden returns to Delaware to campaign back in his home state. Well, more than 3 million people are expected to cast their votes this year right here in Wisconsin in what some are calling the most important election of our lifetimes. So our Charles Benson is taking a look at how many ballots have already been sent out, the ballots already returned, and which counties are worth really keeping an eye on. Charles, good morning. Good morning. More than 45 million Americans have voted. So let's take a look at how many have voted in Wisconsin. Right now, that number you see there, 1.5 million, almost 1.6 million. That's how many ballots have been sent out. So let's look at how many people have returned those ballots already. And right now, more than 1.1 million people have voted already in Wisconsin, mailed in their ballot. What about those early voters in person? Two days of in-person voting already, and we've seen 150,000 people vote already. Keep in mind, we're going to have about 3 million people vote when it's all said and done. But I want to show you two counties to keep an eye on. These are called pivot counties, counties that President Trump won in 16 and counties that President Obama won in 12. And I want to show you Racine County right now. So far, 7,500 people have voted early in Racine County. That's about 5% of the total so far. And in Kenosha County, another pivot county, 5,300 people voted in person already. Keep in mind, President Trump won Kenosha County by about 250 votes. Charles Benson, TMJ4 News. All right, Charles, thank you. Voters will decide on more than just the presidential race. There are state and local representatives and proposals to spend tax dollars on the ballot as well. Go to TMJ4.com slash Decision 2020 if you would like to see what's on your local ballot. Milwaukee's former chief of police is still trying to get his old job back. Meanwhile, the Fire and Police Commission is moving forward in the search for his replacement. This morning, the field is narrowed to three candidates. Our Ryan Jenkins is live in Milwaukee with more on those finalists and how the community will choose the next top cop. Ryan? 
Good morning. We are looking ahead to December 3rd. That's when the FPC says that they hope to make a final decision on who will be the next police chief here in Milwaukee. But first, they're asking for your help now that they've narrowed down this candidate pool to just three finalists. The FPC says that the finalists will participate in a series of community forums. The city has also opened up an online public comment forum for anyone to go online and submit questions or comments. We have a link to that forum on our website, tmj 4 right now if you're interested. So who are these candidates? Well, first there's Malik Aziz, a former Dallas police major who is currently the national chair and executive director of the National Black Police Association. Also Chris Davis, the deputy chief for the Portland Police Bureau. He says he has been working to eliminate disparities facing communities of color and increasing engagement within his department. And Hoyt Mahaley is a local. He's an FBI agent and is a former MPD officer. He's also a former basketball champ at Rufus King High School. He won a championship back in the 80s. I know the people there. I know the network. I know people inside the department. But yet I've been away and I've gained a lot of experience in the federal government. And I'm going to bring that back to Milwaukee to make the police department the best police department in the country. It's a really exciting time to me in our profession. And I, I see so much opportunity in a city like Milwaukee for us to do some really great work together. And Major Malik Aziz sent us a statement saying, quote, I'm grateful to the Fire and Police Commission for selecting me out of six great finalists to move forward in the process with two others. I'm looking forward to the next step of meeting and engaging with the great citizens of the city of Milwaukee. We are still waiting to learn more about when and how these community forums will be held. And of course, as soon as we learn that information, we'll pass that along. Again, they hope to select their final choice by December 3rd. Reporting live in Milwaukee, Ryan Jenkins, TMJ4 News. Coming up on TMJ4 News today, cooking up something good. Digital reporter James Groh takes us to a shared kitchen space in the River West neighborhood where local chefs can take creative cooking to the next level. All right, 639 now, time for your super seven day forecast. It is soggy out the door again this morning, even some rumbles of thunder, a little bit of lightning, nothing severe. 50 degrees for your high today. That's now. This afternoon will be falling to around 40 degrees, if not the 30s by this evening. Now Saturday, 44 degrees, some rain and snow possible late on Sunday and still a chance on Monday. No accumulation expected each day here below normal. 46 on Tuesday, 50 on Wednesday and 46 on Thursday. Storm 4 Max radar continues to show showers working across the area where we're seeing the heaviest rain for your morning commute when this will be out of here all in your forecast coming up 642 a bond hearing scheduled today for two of the men involved in a plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer Joseph Morrison and Pete Musico facing state charges including threat of terrorism gang membership providing material support for terrorist acts and felony firearms. Prosecutors claim the two men are founding members of the Wolverine Watchmen, a militia and other uh, allowed other suspects involved in the kidnapping plot to train on their property in Michigan. Judge Amy Coney Barrett's nomination to be an associate justice on the Supreme Court moves to the full U.S. Senate now. Final confirmation vote expected next week. All Republicans voted in favor. All Democrats boycotted the proceeding. Their seats filled with images of people they say would lose health care coverage if the Affordable Care Act were overturned, a key case that is due to come before the U.S. Supreme Court next month. Judiciary Committee Chair Lindsey Graham uh, told the colleagues the uh, vote would go forward whether or not the Democrats showed up. We're taking a live look right now. This is Cathedral Square Park downtown where today a sign of the holiday season will uh, set to arrive. More than 100 evergreen trees that will eventually be decorated by schools and nonprofits for the annual Holiday Lights Festival. Those trees will be delivered today. Oh, look, there they are. they're here. They are. It's oh. happening. It's happening yes. as we speak. This is so fun to see as you see them uh, being delivered to the park. This is a tradition. I mean, anyone who's been down there has seen these trees. They're decorated. A lot of the ornaments made by children in the Milwaukee area. Always a, a fun sign of the yeah. holiday season. 
And Brian, it doesn't look like it's raining on top of those uh, wonderful workers downtown this morning. For the brief time being, uh, yeah. Okay. But it, <laughs> there's going to be more rain out there this morning. Uh, much of southeastern Wisconsin going to be soggy. It was a really soggy night through the night last night. Uh, northwest up towards Fond du Lac, Beaver Dam, Sheboygan. This is an area here where you get the yellows and the oranges indicating over three inches of rainfall. Radars estimating three inches to as much as five inches of rain out towards Beaver Dam. Double check your sub pump. Make sure that's running good. Uh, not uh, getting over overused uh, this morning uh, up towards uh, Sheboygan and Fond du Lac. Storm 4 Max radar across uh, southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, plenty of showers to go here. Much of the area seeing kind of that break here. As Susan just mentioned, uh, from Milwaukee out to Waukesha. Uh, down to the south, though, some heavier showers rolling through the Kenosha area. Even a few strikes of lightning. But for the time being in the city of Milwaukee, just a light rainfall out towards West Dallas, Greenfield, down towards Cudahy as well. Let's widen the view and you can see more showers extending back towards uh, eastern Iowa. This conveyor belt of moisture will continue to push into southeastern Wisconsin. You can see how things fill in again uh, by late morning, 1030 AM. Things are looking soggy here across the area. Here's the good news. I think besides maybe a stray shower, we should be done with the rainfall by this afternoon. This evening for the high school football games, any outdoor plans this evening? It will be chilly. But it will be dry and eventually the skies clear out. We'll see some stars overhead tonight and some frost by tomorrow morning. Saturday, decent amount of sunshine. We'll call it partly cloudy skies. This is roughly the noon hour. We are looking good here. And then as we head on into uh, Saturday night, uh, clouds start to increase again. We'll look for more cloud cover to start the day on Sunday, starting dry Sunday. And then we'll look for a chance of some rain, maybe mixing with some snow Sunday evening, but no accumulation expected. Rainfall amounts today, another half inch to an inch of rain on top of the couple inches of rain we've had the last couple days. It's a live look in Waukesha. 43 looks pretty wet there in Waukesha. In the city of Milwaukee, you got Fond du Lac Avenue here at 49 degrees this morning. And across southeastern Wisconsin, we're ranging from 51 in Kenosha to a cooler 38 in Beaver Dam. That colder air moving in from the northwest. Weather headlines, soggy morning, chilly air moving in, and then late weekend rain snow mixture. Your forecast for today, 50 this morning, 40 by this afternoon. Rain and storms end by the early afternoon hours. 33 for tonight, chilly tonight. On Saturday, partly cloudy, 44 degrees. On Sunday, 43. Again, it's late on Sunday. Our next round of rain maybe mixing with a little bit of snow. Still a chance of some rain and snow on Monday, 42. Again, no accumulation expected. Dry on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Wednesday next week looks to be the best day of the week, guys. All right, that's good to know, Brian. Thank you. Well, we all have that person we know who has that delicious home recipe we say could sell out at stores. In Milwaukee, there's a shared space for new chefs looking to upgrade from their home kitchens. Digital reporter James Grow has that story. There's a shared kitchen in Milwaukee full of culinary entrepreneurs, and they are coming up with some seriously delicious food. So the kitchen's created to give entrepreneur, entrepreneurs the different set of equipment and a group of people to be around to bounce ideas off. It's called MKE Kitchen in the River West neighborhood. It's about eight years old and it's meant for entrepreneurs looking for an upgrade from their home kitchen. Currently, there are 16 different people renting out this space. Gumbo Valley is a southern creation that's brought to the Midwest. Uh, it's a traditional Louisiana dish. This is my Emmanuel's mix. Mm -hmm. It is a mix of corn rice, cereal, pretzels, and jumbo pecans, and I put an irresistible coating on top of it. I make and sell elderberry syrup and elder, other elderberry products. It's just my little family company. To learn how to support these chefs and try their food, go to tmj4.com and look for the story. James Grow, TMJ4 News. Well, still ahead, we'll do the four things you need to know before you start your day, including the search for Milwaukee's next chief of police narrowed down to three finalists. We tell you who they are and what happens next. 652 before coronavirus and the pandemic, you might have done a virtual doctor visit or video conference call for work. Now it seems online services and classes are everywhere. Consumer investigator Kristen Byrne introduces us to some other virtual businesses you may not have considered. This virtual way of doing business is something many of us have become familiar with. 
And for some companies, this online shift has given their bottom lines a nice boost. I'm John from Fixer. Fixer.com is one of them, a virtual contactless home repair service. We found that most people with a screwdriver and a coach can fix just about anything in their home. So if you could turn it over so we could see the front of the handle, actually. CEO Mike Evans says you text F-I-X-E-R, and over video, a skilled handy person will walk you through how to make a repair. How is this different than just going on YouTube? Yeah, there's something really magical about a experienced handy person who can see what you're seeing and hear what you're hearing over a video chat and say, oh, that's this problem, and this is the right way to fix it. Nice, that's probably good for us. Evans says business has nearly doubled since the start of the pandemic. And just in general, what type of growth have you seen for your business during COVID? The site Urban Sitter, where parents find babysitters, is seeing similar success. It's been a big increase on the virtual babysitting, and that's something that we did very little of before COVID. CEO Lynn Perkins explains caregivers working from home need someone to entertain their kids for an hour or two. She says a virtual babysitter fits the bill, especially for kids ages five to nine. These sitters, it's, it's pretty amazing. These sitters have talents ranging from, you have actors in New York that are doing virtual babysitting to language specialists. So you can have your child take a French lesson or they can be entertained by a puppet show from a sitter. Um, and you're not limited to your geography. So you really have this wide range of talent that you can pick from. These virtual services are not for everyone, but if it does work for your family, another bonus is the cost savings. With Fixer.com, it's $15 for every 15 minutes. And with Urban Sitter, you can find a virtual babysitter offering a rate you are willing to pay. I'm consumer investigator Kristen Byrne.